We've got our final typesetting as a test file. Now we want to clean it up. We want to turn it into a sharp vector that's infinitely scalable, right? So to do that, we have two options. We can either go into the paid program of Adobe Illustrator, open it up, shrink it down, holding down shift as we shrink it so it fits onto the artboard. We have to hold down shift so it doesn't distort. And then clicking on properties, scrolling down to where it says image trace, and then choosing black and white logo. And then immediately what was really pixelated will be a vector and perfectly sharp. Works really well on black and white shapes. Right? Beautiful. I don't need to make any alterations except that I don't want it to also make a vector of the white shapes. So I need to go to the advanced options, which you'll see right here. The image trace panel, you'll also find it under window image trace. And then you have to go to the advanced options. And I don't know why there are so many steps, but then you say ignore color. And it will ignore the background white. So you just have a vector of your black type. That's what we're trying to get done today. And then you can save it, file, save as onto your computer, an SVG file, the one at the bottom, scalable vector graphic to your desktop. And remember I call these test files when they move between raster and vector. So that's the, the paid program way to do it. Let's try our freeware way of doing it. We open up this site, Vectorizer AI, and we take our test file, which is right here on my JPEG. I drag it in. I say, okay. And I wait. <laughs> and it's doing exactly what image trace in Illustrator is doing. And I want to see if there's a way, because there should be, that I can erase all the white. So if I go to download, because if I zoom in, you can see how sharp that is compared to what came in. And that's nice. That's what I want. Unlike Illustrator, it's going to give me some, some grays as well which isn't great. So this doesn't have as much custom custom ability, but let's see what I can do here. I want to export it as an SVG. And hmm. Yeah, I don't see any way I can like get rid of a background color here. Let me try something quick. I'll download that, see how it works. But let me try this. In PhotoP, I'm going to turn off my white background. And I'm going to select, or here, I'll do it this way. I'll bring in my JPEG so it's all in one flattened layer. Place it, move it up to the top, turn off all the other layers. Then I'm going to use my magic wand, uncheck contiguous, select all the whites, and yeah, and just delete them with no feather. So let me select it again. Let me up that tolerance to at least 32. I can select all the white. I'm going to rasterize it. Select all the white and delete it. And then I'm going to save it as a file. Uh, and then I'm going to go, let's see, I'm going to first use image adjustments. This is to try to make the most of the freeware vectorizing. Illustrator works great and you can adapt it. But here I really want to play with making this cleanly black and white as much as possible. So I'm going to use image adjustment and levels. All right, now what I'm going to do is save this as a PNG. So export as a PNG. 
with test in the name. Because that doesn't have any white in it. And this is a, a test I'm doing. Because when you use Illustrator, it doesn't matter if it's a PNG or not when you live trace. It will always come in with white. But let's try this. Let's try bringing in the PNG and see if it, it maybe doesn't have the white background. So it doesn't have the white background there. Good. And now maybe it will only trace the black shapes, which is what I want. In order to be able to use this only with freeware. Hey, hey. Success. So if you bring in a PNG, it might give you a slight white stroke around it. But this gives you vector black type, and that's what we want. So that is a better result. So I'm going to overwrite my old one with that one. So this is now the one, this SVG. I'm going to mark as orange, and then let's see the Illustrator one, which is here. And let's compare them. So I'll mark as red. So we're going to open them, I think, let's see, can you open it with, well, we'll bring them into Photopea. I won't use paid for programs. All right. So now in Photopea, I'm going to bring them in. First, the Illustrator one. There it is. Put it up here. Comes in as a smart object, infinitely scalable. Now, the vectorizer AI one. Put it in. All right, I'll do it like this. <laughs> and we're going to compare. See if one is better than the other. They're both vectors. Whoops. Come on, Photo P, keep up with me. So let's look. And this is already to size. 18 by 24 by 350 pixels per inch. This is plenty big. Yeah, so I think Vectorizer did a nice job. It just has that little white halo around it. Which is not a bad thing for black type. Whereas the uh, Illustrator one is perfectly clean. It's just black. But either of those would work. I'll make one red. This was the Illustrator one. Because we have Illustrator in the lab. And then this one is orange. That's the freeware one. Okay, now I turn my background on. And I turn on my spot illustration. Which is somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And then I'm going to play with the placement. Right? So, let's move my spot illustration up on top of the vector and make sure that's readable. Or maybe I can just tilt whoops, with free transform option command T. I can tilt my spot illustration a little bit to play with placement one way or the other. Kind of like that. Maybe even grow it a tiny bit. Option Command T. Just grow it a tiny bit. Because I like how the hair is overlapping the O. Now, what do you want to avoid in design? You want to avoid uncomfortable touching. Things called tangencies. So that's a little uncomfortable. So I might transform it, make it just a little bit smaller. Remember, this is just placing it. So I know where to put my color illustration when I'm all done. So I'm always locking the proportions. I'm not distorting it at all. 
I'm just placing it, rotating it, or scaling it. Just basic free transform stuff. I'm not distorting, warping, or anything else. All right, I think that avoids tangencies. And now I have my black type solution as a vector in my raster file, right? So this black type would size up to any scale that I need. So I'm simply going to make a screen grab of it and post that to Canvas. And that's what we're trying to get done today. Design our black type in assignment six. And that's the first requirement, just the black type. But you get there by going through text blocking. So I'll, I'll introduce that. So a text blocking sketch. You don't need to post it, but if you want to share it, that's great. That's how you kind of thumbnail an experiment. And that should be in my assignment folder, except I don't have an assignment six folder yet, so it's somewhere here. Remember, I warned you, lots and lots of files <laughs> today. And if I need to, I can always go back to PhotoP and turn it on. This was my text blocking sketch. The one I decided on after trying a few different things. So I'll put that in first. Then I'm going to put in my black vector type solution. And it's okay if you upload it without your illustration, like this example. But I also don't mind, and in some ways it's it can be more informative to your process if you upload it with your spot illustration in it, so you can show the relationship between it. So that's this one. And then I really have to organize my files because my next one is going to be my color type solution. And that is easily done. We'll start it next class. But all I do then is duplicate my vector type, which is here. And duplicate it, Command J. And then use layer styles to try different colors, just like we did with coloring our logos. Come on, duplicate. There it goes. I'm impatient. All right. So to do layer styles, I double click on the layer. And just like we did with our color logo, I can do now with the type solution. I can set a color overlay. That's any color I want. But wouldn't it make sense to have a color illustration to balance your color type against? So at this point, I try to finish up my, my spot illustration from assignment five, make any additional changes I think are needed, and then I save it as a PNG. So I see a little change I, I want to make. I don't like that this is open-ended, but I'll change it as a PNG. So file, uh, save a copy, turn off all the background, save it as a PNG, there it is, boom. I'm gonna move that into my assignment six folder at the end of the day. And then I bring it in bring it up on top, and I know exactly where to place it. 